It's definitely weird to think that the first of the trio of the Giants World Series happened over 10 years ago now. When you think of the 2010 World Series or the Giants World Series rosters in general, what are some names that come to mind? Like Buster Posey, maybe Pablo Sandoval, the Kung Fu Panda, maybe Tim Lincecum, the freak, or perhaps Matt Cain and his perfect game against the Astros. Naturally, I'm gonna tell you a name that you weren't thinking of because this is the Forgotten Series and that's what it's all about. A long forgotten name on the roster that won the Giants their first World Series in over 50 years is Freddie Sanchez, an infield specialist and line drive machine. He had some clutch hits and clutch plays along the way. He was by no means a core piece of this 2010 roster. Freddie would not only win his first and only World Series ring in 2010, that was the first time he'd ever make the playoffs. Because for the majority of his career, Freddie Sanchez played for a lovable loser and had one spectacular season along the way. This video is about his story with the Pittsburgh Pirates. Freddy Sanchez was a Pittsburgh Pirate from 2004 to 2009, and all but one of those teams won over 70 games. These Pirates were basement dwellers every year, but one of their lone bright spots was Mr. Freddy Sanchez. And I'm gonna tell you exactly what just made him so special. As always, it's fitting that we should start at the beginning of the journey. Freddy Sanchez was taken with the 332nd overall pick in the 11th round of the 2000 MLB draft by the Boston Red Sox. Born with a severely pigeon-toed left foot and club right foot, Sanchez defied doctor's expectations by learning how to walk normally, let alone playing a professional sport. However, after just 50 at-bats over two seasons in Boston, Sanchez was traded to Pittsburgh. Sanchez spent most of 2004 in the minor leagues, only playing nine games for the Pirates, but he'd make the ball club in 2005 as a bench player and bat 291. He entered the 2006 season as a bench player again, but he was valuable to the Pirates in his ability to play multiple infield positions. And when third baseman Joe Randa went on the disabled list with a foot injury at the beginning of May, Sanchez took over the position, becoming a starter for the Red of the year. So though he's mostly remembered as a second baseman, Sanchez played 99 of his 141 games at third base in 2006. When he became a starter, Freddie heated up and never slowed down. His batting averages for each month all surpassed at least 300, including batting 360 in May and 380 in June. Freddie also went 57 for 129, a 442 slash line, against lefties on the entire season. Freddie's first season as a starter led him to his first all-star appearance as well, but it was pretty unlikely that he'd get there in the first place. Freddie wasn't on the ballot because he was a bench player to start the season, but he still received over 850,000 write-in votes, which was fifth in voting in the entire season. Fittingly, the 2006 All-Star Game was at PNC Park in Pittsburgh. They loved Freddy in Pittsburgh, and when he finally got in the game in the fifth inning, he had his chance to shine, making two really nice defensive plays, the first off Vladimir Guerrero and the second off Pudge Rodriguez. This was a special moment for Pirates fans who hadn't had a lot to root for in quite a while. Seeing one of their young stars blossom into an All-Star must have been a great feeling. Oh, also, Bronson Arroyo did this during the commercial break. I had to see it, so you guys have to see it too. That's how it works. If you hadn't guessed already, 2006 would be a career year for Freddy Sanchez. He led the NL in batting average and doubles, and second in batting average in balls in play. He was also top 10 in lowest K percentage, he had a 4.6 war, and was top 30 in weighted runs created and OPS. In just the span of one season, Freddy Sanchez went from a bench warming utility guy to the National League batting champion. And quite literally, no one expected it back in 2006. But Freddy didn't actually claim the batting title until the last day of the season, passing Miguel Cabrera by going 2 for 4 in a 1 to nothing victory versus the Reds. The 344 average he had was the highest by a Pirate since Roberto Clemente, who batted 345 in 1969. So, how exactly did Freddy Sanchez surpass some of the greatest hitters in 2006, especially considering that the 2006 NL MVP race featured career best seasons from guys like Albert Pujols, Ryan Howard, Carlos Beltran, David Wright, you name it, they were there. Well, Freddy loved to swing. Freddy Sanchez had arguably one of the best contact hitting seasons ever. Topping the league in line drive percentage and line drive percentage plus, he also hit to the opposite field top three in the NL and was top five in terms of hitting pitches out of the zone and his contact rate nearly broke the top 10 in the NL. I mentioned before that Freddy Sanchez was top 10 in terms of lowest K percentage, but he was also top 10 in terms of lowest walk percentage because he loved to swing the bat. Sanchez had more doubles than walks, 23 more to be exact, 53 to 31. So despite a high bat average at 344, a low walk percentage, caused his on-base percentage to be understandably low, and by proxy, his OPS. This not only caused him to drop drastically in MVP voting, but it would also cost him a silver slugger, which went to Chase Utley, who would go on to win three more in consecutive seasons. But in terms of National League batting title winners, Freddy Sanchez has one of the best in the past 15 years. His 344 batting average is top three in terms of National League batting title winners, with only Chipper Jones eclipsing 350 at an unbelievable 3 
364 batting average. At the season's end, Freddy Sanchez received the Tony Canigliaro Award, an annual award to a player who overcomes obstacles and adversity to succeed in recognition of having led the NL in hitting even though doctors once wondered if he could ever walk in the first place. Freddy Sanchez, or Free Swingin' Freddy as I like to call him now, had one of the best seasons in recent memory but sadly was overshadowed by poor team performance and a lack of end season awards to show for it. But Pirates fans deserve something to smile about these days, so I thought making this video would do him a little bit of justice. I'm the Jolly Olive, and I'll see you guys next time.